This video was brought to you by the Kingston Bolt, the easy and effective way to back up all your iPhone photos and videos and free up storage on your iPhone. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. What is going on guys, Alex here, and today we're going to be testing how much Apple slows down your old iPhone using new software and the techniques that we now know they have been using to slow down your older generation iPhone. For this test, I'm going to be using my iPhone 4s, which I have right here. This is currently running iOS 9.3.5, but we're also going to be testing iOS 6.1.3, and we're also going to be swapping out the batteries on each individual software to see how an old battery or a new battery actually affects the performance. So without any further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so what we're going to be testing at first is actually going to be the speed that this phone can open up. So here we got the exact same iPhone 4s with the exact same new battery. And the first app we're going to be testing is Spotify. So let's clear all the apps that are here and just get straight into the test. So iOS 6.1.3 finished that opening task in 4 seconds and 18 frames. And then I was not in finished at 16 seconds and 3 frames, which is just slightly under 4 times the amount of time it took iOS 6.1.3 to do exactly the same task. Actually using the app is pretty good between both the software versions. iOS 9.3.5 definitely has a lot of lag when you go into a new menu or you try and scroll on something as you can see just here. But with iOS 6.1.3 it's like using a modern day flagship, it is honestly flawless. And the same test now running on a 4 year old battery instead of a brand new one. iOS 6.1.3 opens the app in 7 seconds and 4 frames, which is 2 seconds and 15 frames more than it took for a new battery. And iOS 9 is just about the same at 16.04, so literally just one frame difference, a 30th of a second difference, which is actually a little bit surprising. And as before, choosing a song on iOS 9 is an absolute pain, especially if you're trying to scroll. iOS 6.1.3 still does everything pretty well and actually loads stuff up and is just ready to use straight away, whereas iOS 9, as you can see just here, is absolutely terrible. I've literally just clicked shuffle play and look at how long it's taking to actually load up that song. That is definitely not the case on iOS 6. The next app up is YouTube. I'm and whilst this may be unsupported on iOS 6 and it'll put you in an update loop which you can't get out of, it is still a fair test to see how fast it can open it because it is supported on iOS 9. So iOS 6 managed to open that in 3 seconds and 13 frames whilst iOS 9 is still going, yep, still going, and opened it in 10 seconds and 22 frames, which is very close to the previous result at just about 3 times the amount of time that it took iOS 6 to open. Running a 4 year old battery is actually pretty much just about the same. iOS 6 only has a 7 frame difference between opening times and iOS 9 is actually faster by 1 second and 18 frames, which is actually a little bit confusing. Next up is Instagram, which I know to be the worst app you could possibly test along with Snapchat on iOS 9.3.5. iOS 6 opened it in 2 seconds and 15 frames, whilst iOS 9 opened it in 4 seconds seconds and 14 frames and I just want to highlight that on iOS 9 scrolling as you can see right here is just so laggy it's unexpected and I really wasn't expecting such poor performance especially when you consider iOS 6 can do the same thing perfectly We're now running the same test on the 4 year old battery and you can see straight away that iOS 6 is so much laggier so much slower in fact it's 2 seconds and 20 frames slower and iOS 9, being iOS 9, actually took 8 seconds and a single frame longer than it did with a new battery to open this app. If we take a look at general performance on iOS 9 just here, you can see the lag is even worse with this 4 year old battery installed. And on iOS 6, once again, it is pretty much flawless. So even with an old battery, iOS 6 actually performs pretty well. Next up is Snapchat, and whilst this may again not be supported on iOS 6, it is still a fair test to see how it can open. So it only took 2 seconds and 16 frames for iOS 6 to open it. But iOS 9 is still going, and it actually took 8 seconds and 8 frames for iOS 9 to open the app. Now unfortunately Snapchat isn't actually supported on iOS 6, it comes up with this could not connect error message, and it's done that every time I've tried to log in, so I'm assuming they've updated the servers or something. The app is no longer supported, which is kind of unfortunate. Now running the same test on the 4 year old battery iOS 6 did it in just 4 frames more than it took with a new battery, and iOS 9 actually did it 1 second and 19 frames faster, which is a little bit confusing. The most intensive app we have here is Real Racing 3, and the opening time so far is going to take a very long time, so I will speed it up 4 times speed, so we can just actually, you know, see this happen without dying. So iOS 
Quest 6 actually opened that, I've been 52 seconds and 7 frames, which is honestly a very long time to wait, which is why I sped it up. iOS 9 is still going at 1 minute, and actually took 1 minute 11 seconds and 22 frames to open the app, which iOS 6 did just about 20 seconds earlier. General performance on both the phones is actually okay in this game, I have to say iOS 9 does have a lot of frame dropping as you can see just right here and it's just generally quite laggy. It's definitely a lot better on iOS 6, you get a much smoother experience, but what can you really expect? iOS 9 is just terrible. Now we're gonna run the same test on the four-year-old battery. I'm gonna speed it up again because, you know, I kinda wanna get this video done and it's taken three weeks so far, so. Uh... So iOS 6 has actually managed to open this app in 40 seconds and 24 frames, which is just about 12 seconds faster than it did it with a brand new battery. And iOS 9 managed to open this app in 58 seconds and 22 frames, which is once again significantly faster than it did with a brand new battery. The main explanation I can think of this and why this happened is because the batteries were replaced, but the phone wasn't wiped out. So it's technically already opened this app before. It wasn't the first launch as with a new battery it was. The Antutu benchmark is up next, and I'm gonna speed this up because it takes about 15, 20 minutes to actually run. And the results with a brand new battery are 12,647 for iOS 6 and 13,459 for iOS 9. I'm running the same test on the 4 year old battery, we've got 12,691 for iOS 6, which is 44 points ahead of the brand new battery, and 13,575 for iOS 9, which is a little bit confusing, but I'll explain what I think has actually happened now. So guys, that is all the testing we're going to do in this video, so let's get a quick summary of the results and compare it to what we've been told by Apple and what we can now learn from the results that we got. So my main takeaway from this this video is that running iOS 6.1.3 on the iPhone 4S with an old battery is just about four times slower than running it with a new battery and that's something that is definitely kind of a concern because in their press release Apple said that the iPhone 5S, 5C, 5, 4S, 4, 3GS and 3G were not affected by the battery slowdown. So why is this phone performing slower? But running iOS 9, there isn't actually much difference between an old battery and a new battery, which essentially means that Apple is just slowing down your old generation iPhone on a new version of software, regardless of the battery health. I have to recommend, if you do have an iPhone 4S on an older generation iPhone, like a 3GS, a 3G, whatever old iPhone, downgrade it to the earliest iOS model you can get. There's a link in the description to where you can view what iOS models you can actually flash because they're still signed. But honestly, I would really love to know what you guys think about what we've uncovered in this video. So drop a comment down in the description below. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe because there's some other stuff that is actually kind of related to this on the channel. So go check that out, subscribe, and click the little bell because YouTube has just screwed my channel over recently. Cheers, algorithm. But apart from that, that is it for me for this video, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. The Kingston Bolt finally brings on-the-go storage to iPhones, allowing up to 128GB of external storage for all of your photos and videos from your iPhone. With easy storage of files and transfers to and from the drive and the computer, the Bolt is the perfect solution for portable iPhone backups. Check out my full review in the top corner or the link in the video description to find out more.